talk a lot about the moral aspects of treatment. And I am very resistant to removing morality from the conversation about addiction and recovery. I understand why people want to do that. It's to bring down the stigma, to address the confusion around the free will issues, for it to be covered by insurance. I agree with all that. I agree with the reasons. Um, my hesitation is that there is a huge moral component to addiction and recovery. And let's talk about what that looks like in recovery. In recovery, I would say the moments where we gain the most growth are the same moments where we gain the most growth in life. What are the most pivotal, pivotal moments of growth in my life? Uh, they are moments when I'm in a moral conflict and I'm not sure what to do. What is the right thing to do in this moment? Uh, if I'm in a marriage and I don't know if this marriage is working and I have kids and I'm trying to figure out, I'm, I'm suddenly I'm in this moral conflict. What is the right thing for me to do? Um, if I'm tempted to go into a career um, largely for money, but it's not my passion, I'm, I'm in a moral conflict. What's the right thing for me to do? Um, on and on and on. The most serious conflicts in our life are these moral conflicts with competing claims on each end. And the reason why I'm hesitant to remove that from the conversation is it is the moral conflicts that induce in human beings the most important parts of ourselves. In order for me to wrestle with a moral conflict, I have to draw on all of these different parts of who I am and my personality, right? So um, a common conflict in treatment, right, that happens is uh, my roommate snuck out and got drunk. And I know. And my roommate comes back and says, don't tell anybody. And suddenly there's a couple of things happening. One, um, I am asked to keep a secret. And in general, secrets, those kinds of secrets, are not the healthiest things to keep inside of us. Um, number two, uh, I'm in this interesting quandary around loyalty to my friend. But on the other end, I'm in an interesting quandary about being honest with the people that are helping me, counselors, therapists, the community at large in treatment. So I have these competing claims. I also have me. I don't want to be walking around with lies in myself. I don't want to, my friend to get in trouble, which is a normal thing. Uh, but I don't want to be dishonest. And suddenly I'm in the midst of a moral conflict. Now, what somebody does in that um, predicament uh, and the process that somebody goes through, that can be like the make or break moment in somebody's treatment experience. You know, when somebody can say, hey, you put me in a really bad position by asking me to keep your secret because you acted out and I'm not willing to co-sign that with you um, and it wasn't okay and you need to go work this out because you've put me in a bad situation, you've put you in a bad situation, you're an alcoholic who allegedly is here to get sober. I get that you don't do this thing perfectly, but you need to straighten this out, right? I and mean, that's a high level response, that's not the common response. But imagine if somebody is used to co-signing everybody's everything all the time in life, they've engaged in a program of recovery, they've strengthened them, they've built what we call a moral core, some center about what the right thing to do is. They're challenged. They're in the middle. They're stuck. They're in the hallway. They don't know whether to go left, whether to go right, right? And suddenly it's like, okay. And they have that conversation. You know what that does for, I mean, that's, that's everything. That's the turning point for people's recovery. So those moments, you know, the moment when you have the difficult conversation with your parents or your loved one that you've never had, you know, those kinds of things where you build that moral core, begin to put yourself in the equation. That's where we get the most growth. Uh, not only do we get that growth morally, we also get it psychologically. We are moral psychological beings. They come hand in hand, right? To be, if you meet somebody who's evil, which is a moral term, whether you believe in evil or not, but, you know, sort of behaves in evil ways, um, depending on their level of, of narcissism, and the way in which they act out, you would have a difficult time saying, well, that person's mentally healthy. They're just evil, right? In general, those things come together, right? And so, you know, uh, to use the extreme example, Adolf Hitler it was not only uh, evil, if such a thing exists, 
Uh, he was also mentally ill and a methamphetamine addict, right? Those things come together. So our, our moral behavior and our psychological uh, wellness, they're integrated with each other. We have to understand that. So we can't just remove morality from the equation of recovery and, dic and, and addiction. We have to figure out how we incorporate that in the conversation about well-being, psychological well-being, spiritual well-being, et cetera.